Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Ghost 11 Vice Squad, brought to you by the Andromus Fly Company and Fly Life Company, our sponsors. After you've watched today's clip, please head over to our awesome online stores at fishingoutdoors.ca or .net for U.S. and international shoppers like myself. Today in the Vice, we're going to show you how to tie two different flies. We have the San Juan Worm and Green Weenie, which are both uh, moderately accepted flies in the fly fishing community, depending on who you talk to. But I like the Kellers for... Uh, the sake of Christmas coming up, we got green and red, so that's what we're going to do. I um, also thought they're really easy flies. If you're getting new into new into if you're new into fly tying, then these would be great introductions. So, without further ado, we have a size 14 R7 jig hook in the vise with a 3.5 millimeter tungsten bead in the color of black nickel. We're going to start our red thread down the hook shank. This is a 6 aught nano soak because I really want to be able to slam it down in a little bit without breaking my thread, which is frustrating. So first of all, we're going to fuse this end. And then we're going to tie it in about two and a half hook shanks, I believe is usually what I go with. Usually eyeball, if I had to put a number, I'd say two and a half hook shanks. And then we're going to spin our thread to uh, make it a little bit thinner. Really dig into the chenille here. i bring our thread back up. And then we are going to wrap up the hook shank to the bead. And we are going to tie it down. Then we're going to move our thread under and over to the eye over here. Flip it, pull the material over top of the bead, and catch it. This is where I like the GSP, so I can really punch down. Just give this pretty even signs. Technically, it really doesn't have to be even, because no middle of the worm has been identified. We can always trim if necessary. And then we are going to half hitch off like we do every other fly. Cut off. Then we're gonna fuse this end too, very carefully. And there you have the San Juan worm. Awesome nephew to uh, the squirmy wormy. I prefer a San Juan because they're more durable. I like squirmies because they have different movement to each their own. Each one catches fish. Each one is uh, equally accepted in the, in the fly fishing community. So next, as I said, we're going to do a green weenie. This time we have a size 16 R7 jig hook with once again a 3.5 millimeter tungsten bead. Time we're going to start thread black. This is a six aught classic wax. Yes. And what we're going to do is we're going to fuse this end right here. The flesh fluorescent green chenille, micro chenille. And then we're gonna, since it's smaller, it's gonna be a little bit easier to tie in, cause less issues. Really bear down on it right here. And then we're gonna, so we're gonna pull it up, bring our other hand down, Oop, put that bead back. 
and then we're just gonna pull back. That'll cause this loop here. Just the loop how you think it should be. Usually I go about an equal length. Uh, I usually use the back of the hook, maybe back of the curve of the hook, if you guys can see it, as my midpoint for this. And a couple wraps. Thread a little bit thinner if you need to. And then bring it back up towards the bead, which is flat around all over here. You can add some lead wraps if you want for extra weight and to control that bead if you need to. And then we're just going to wrap up like we did with the sand one. Got a nice even body. And then when you think you've got enough, give it one more wrap, bear it in there. It'll really set that bead. And we'll also put the material right at the slot of the bead, which is important here in a minute. Just give it two pretty strong wraps. And we're gonna take these curved arrow scissors from Anadroma's Fly Company, and they're gonna fit right into that slot to grab this material, take it right off. As you can see, no mistake there. A couple more wraps, and then we're gonna half hitch off. Looks like our bead's not quite as set as I want it to be. So we're gonna give it a couple more strong wraps in here. Always an option, especially with a black bead, because it'll match the color. And now we're gonna half it off again. Perfect. This fly takes the imitation of a um, caddis larvae most times works great for that with the green body escaping from the black head both these flies are great for both stocked and wild fish I personally do not fish a San Juan very often in fact not sure I ever have more than once but I have to say it is what I caught my first ever trout on a fly rod on a uh, little story time I was out could not Catch a thing was casting quite terribly, might I say. I was probably uh, 11 at the time, probably my second time out with my dad. He uh, he took up the hobby not long before that, and I uh, caught a tree behind me as I always do, and I pulled out, and uh, there was this worm-looking thing. I'm like, huh. Me being a reformed bait fisherman, I was like, huh. I'll try to eat worms. Fish eat worms. Threw it out there, and on the first cast, I caught uh, my first ever trout on the fly rod. First ever fish on the fly rod. It was a very small wild brown memory that won't ever leave me. So, before you take the moment to attack this fly, remember it. It makes great memories, especially for new fly fishermen. So, that being said, uh, thank you for watching this week's episode. You guys have a great Christmas. And please check out our awesome online stores at fishingoutdoors.ca and .net for U.S. and international shoppers. Hope you guys are having a great Sunday, and I will see you guys next week. Merry Christmas, and have a great day.